Hello, welcome to Chisholm Prism, everybody. It's been a while. Um, I did, I took a little break for the holidays. Um, I was sick for a little bit and a bunch of other things, life that I was dealing with. So I haven't been posting on YouTube for a little bit, but I am back on it. I have a lot of really cool, exciting um, projects that I am working on and some cool videos that I will be uploading soon and throughout the year. So if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, you can do so down below or comment and like. All the support is appreciated and I love you guys all. For today, I want to talk about a DIY project that I started and made a video previously, which I'll link in this video, um, but it's my chandelier in my dining room. So the video that I did make and what it was, was more of like a twine cage that I was just trying to cover up and maybe spruce up my older light fixture because um, it wasn't really the style that I was looking for. So I made this casing of twine around it and it was like a cool globe, which I, I did enjoy, but I had an epiphany. I had a breakthrough and I was like, we can take this a step further. So I went ahead and I was looking around on Pinterest, of course, and I came across this photo of this like beautiful, like dome cover situation. And from looking around, I can tell this is probably a pretty expensive light fixture, like hundreds, maybe a thousand dollars. I don't know. But I was like, I can make this. It doesn't seem that hard. And from the globe shape that I had, I figured I can rework this and make my own version. So that's what I did. Um, and here I'm going to show you guys a tutorial of step by step of how I moved from the original light fixture to the twine fixture. That's another video I'll link. And then from that twine to this, like, I'm going to call it a eh, paper mache globe, paper mache globe. Sure. Um, so let's get into it. So for the ingredients that I had for this, it honestly was not expensive at all. It's actually a very cheap project. Um, if you wanted to do it yourself, you could even skip the twine step that I did entirely and just have that like blow up beach ball and go ahead and start wrapping that in the paper mache. So of course you guys probably know paper mache. It's not an unusual project. So it's just like I used cornstarch and glue and water and kind of made a mixture that felt comfortable for me. Just having like a, a gooey consistency was nice. Um, so I mixed that in a Tupperware and then I had these strips. So these strips, I'll link them down in my description because I first thought like, let me just use paper but the paper wasn't, and I, I attempted to use it because I ran out of this um, material that I had, but the paper wasn't sticking. And so I had, I like immediately, I didn't use that. But the material that I did end up using, it was like a fabric that had a kind of like a plaster texture to it already. And I think that helped create um that plastered look that I was going for that I saw in that previous photo so I was cutting those bandages let's call them bandages I was cutting them up in strips so it's easy just to wrap the twine shape as easily as I could I just needed to cover this shape in that bandage um and I just kept going I would dip it and kind of try to smooth out that um 
glue solution I made across it and just kept sticking it around the globe until it was covered. And I, the pack that I had was about six of these rolls. Um, and I wish I had like a seventh roll because it just needed a little bit more coverage. But honestly, it still worked out fine. So I went ahead and covered that encasement um, and then I let it dry overnight because, you know, it's a lot of glue, it's a lot of water, it's wet, um, it just needed to sit for a while. Okay, so for the next day after that dome had dried, um, it was rock solid. So it was a nice, like, it, honestly, it felt like a cast. Like, you know, like, broke your arm or your leg, and I, I, I'm never broken a body part but I've signed many a cast in my day and it felt like that same consistency um which is a nice kind of structure and it was still really light which is a great aspect to this because if you're going to try to cover some kind of a fixture in your own household it's nice to have a light object to kind of shade it so that it doesn't weigh down your current fixture um, once it dried, I had, I wanted to create the same shape that I saw on that photo originally. So I was like, I flipped it over. I needed to create this wave pattern at the bottom because I feel like that would elevate this. And that's what I did. I went with a pencil. I outlined the wave at the bottom. It can be pretty generic. Um, but I went with scissors after I drew it out and I cut along and it, it, it created a really nice look. But I did want to seal it so I got a hot glue gun and went along the edge and made sure there was no like frayed edges um, kind of look. If I had more of the strips, I would have covered the the edge with the strips. I thought that that could have been an even cleaner line, but I didn't have any more. So that's what I ended up doing. It's fine. Um, yeah, so after that, it, it looked good. I just needed to paint it. So when I needed to paint it, I thought on the inside, I liked in the photo, it had a, a pop of color. I thought that would be pretty impactful and the yellow I chose yellow because it matched my dining chairs so I went ahead and painted the inside yellow and then on the outside I had some leftover black gloss paint and I just covered that whole thing in black so there's like that bright bright yellow inside and then on the outside it's more of um uh like a strong you know what I mean like that that dark color and a room that's so bright too I think that's another reason why I didn't feel the twine was enough that original glow because it was too airy and that room is already so bright and airy that to have such like a, a statement dark shade on that light fixture I felt really grounded the space and created uh, a real statement piece in the room so yeah I let the paint dry another day or so and then I needed to go in and attach the fixture right so my plan was to just cut cut a cut inside a line to the top center and then I'm just gonna wrap the shade around the fixture in the middle, if that makes sense. <laughs> so I, I, I cut into the, the, the dome and then encased the fixture and made sure to hot glue that, that line again. So if I wanted to remove this, it's very renter friendly. I can easily just cut back along that line, unwrap it, that's the fixture, that's what they gave me. So no damage done, but yeah, just a, a simple install, uh, wrapped it around and glued it, works perfectly fine. It looks, it looks really cool. This is a DIY project that 
I would highly recommend. Like if you have a fixture in your house that you're not too happy with, maybe you're, you're renting this place, maybe it's your own place, I don't know, but you don't have like the funds or the means to just buy a whole new light fixture, install it, and it's all of that. Like this is a great way to get away with just giving it a whole new fresh look. You know, it just takes some time and a fun little craft project that you can do. Um, yeah, I, I'd recommend this. I'd recommend this for anyone looking to spruce up their dining space. So thank you for watching this video, everybody. I hope this inspires you to do something creative in your own space. Um, I appreciate you watching. Give a like, comment, subscribe down below. All of that love is appreciated, trust me. So thank you for watching again and stay tuned. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.